Hello, my name is Steve Adolf and welcome to our topic, a user story template. In previous topics, we introduced what a story was and we explained why you were interested in user stories. In this topic here, I want to show you a simple template that you can use for formatting your user stories. Now, as it turns out, of course, if you ask five or six people for a user story template, you're likely to get 10 or 12 different templates. And the reason, part of the reason behind that, of course, is everyone has their own template, but also most people have a number of different needs within their organization and what information they want to track with the user story template. So what I would like to do in this section is at least introduce to you a minimal template. Basically, a minimum format for a user story. What's the absolute minimum information you need to track with the user story? Now, I've seen user story templates with like 10, 15, 20 fields. This one here has five. Most of those fields are you know, location dependent within an organization. There's information you need to track. But here's what I think you need to track minimally. You need a title. Right? Every good story, of course, has a title and user stories are no different. One of the things, though, that's really important about a user story title is that it usually can be a flag whether or not you've got a good user story or not. Being able to come up with a good title can really indicate, is this a user story or not? And the two attributes I think that are important on that are, one, can you come up with a verb phrase name for or verb phrase title for your user story. And second, is it intention revealing? So what this, where this is going is to say, well, you come up with a title like user story one. Okay, bad, that's not, that's not a good user story. Um, traveler user story, well, there's not a lot of, it's, that's really not a good verb phrase name, nor is it intention revealing. Upgrade seat. All right, now we've got a verb phrase. Now we have a now we have a, a decent intention revealing name. It says what the user story really is all about. The size. Most of you may have not gone through a topic on agile estimating. All I will say to this is that the size is intended to capture how big the user story is, not how long it's going to take to implement it. So generally the size is not recorded in hours or effort hours. It's meant to capture the size of the user story. And we can talk more about that when we talk about agile estimation and, and user story points. The story itself, the two or three sentences that describe something of value to the stakeholder. The acceptance criteria. If you remember that, this is sort of like a bullet list of the criteria that we captured during the conversations with the product owner or stakeholder to help us elaborate this user story. And they also helps us under, gives us the testable criteria to know when are we done? When would this user story be accepted by the product owner? That nice little checklist. Yep, that's done, that's done, that's done. Now, this, now we can bring this story to the product owner for acceptance. Finally, the last field is sort of, I called it notes, but what it's really intended to be is a placeholder for all the other bits of information that you may want to capture with this user story. So this might be something, you know, this might represent, well, maybe in your organization you'd like to capture who the author of the user story is. Maybe you want to indicate what the source of this, other information, a model reference. Uh, this is all the various things that different organizations may want to capture. So this is where you can get those 10, 15, 20 different fields associated with the user story. The point that I'm trying to make here, this is effectively four fields that are essential to a user story. And then this fifth one is sort of a representative or placeholder for all the other fields that you believe are going to be necessary to add to your user story template. One caveat I would give you though, try to have fewer fields than more. Less is more in the Agile world. So don't, try, don't go nuts trying to come up with all different fields, but you 
want to keep this ideally keep this to a minimum but keep it as simple as possible as Einstein would say but no simpler so here's an example of what a user story might look like in this format you know we have the title for the user story upgrade seat we have the size uh, we have the the story itself and then we have the acceptance criteria and there might be notes associated with this one thing I want to say about the story format or the way that you can write the story is this is something you'll see used this format here is something you'll see used in a lot of user stories this is a so called cone format that was popularized by Mike Cohn in about 2003 in his book user stories applied and it's a lovely format because it starts as as a who in other words who wants the value of this user story who wants the benefit who is this important to I want the what okay what is it exactly that we want and then the fun part so that why why do I want this so for example as a traveler I want to be able to upgrade my seat so that I can travel more comfortably right and this is really wonderful when you're having the conversation with the team and the product owner right because now you know who this is important to you know what they want and why they want it and that facilitates the conversation because knowing why somebody wants something and why it's valuable to them can help you really understand the scope of this story and also maybe design alternatives so this is something to consider here don't get pedantic about this remember the intention behind this of the user story is to try to capture these thin slices of value that we can deliver to a stakeholder get their feedback say are we cruising into the valuable green or are we finding our way into the wasteful red and get their feedback quickly so that you can pivot right that's the intention the cone format or that as a who I want what such that why really facilitates this but there I've run into situations where it doesn't quite always work or it doesn't quite always make sense or sometimes it obscures the story but don't use that as a simple excuse well we can't write it that way remember what the intention here we want these thin vertical slices that we can quickly get feedback from with the stakeholders or the product owner we're trying to avoid these so-called crud stories and we don't want to have you know read the database perform some logic update the user interface because this delays getting feedback so remember what the intent behind the user stories are when you're writing the story